Hi guys, so today we're going to talk about alpha channel, which is a very important topic for the compositor to know. As a compositor, you will receive different files from different departments that will contain alpha channels. Now before the alpha channel, we need to mention a color channels. The white spectrum of colors that you see on the screen here right now is a mixture of three main color channels, RGB. They stand for red, blue and green. In short, the lighter areas of that color channel reveals more of that channel's color. The dark areas suppresses it. So, for example, in the red channel, in the lighter areas, red color is more present there. Now, visually, RGB channels are represented in grayscale, as it is easier to see the contrast in luminance where there is no color present. So let's check that in a grayscale. For example, this red hard drive is brighter in a red channel, while in blue and green, it is more darker. So green and blue does not pass through more in that area. That's why we see this hard drive in red. Let me show you some example inside the software so it will be easier to understand. So if we open up the image here in After Effects, we see the full colors, the mixture of RGB. In order to see them separately as single channels, you need to click this icon here and choose red. Now you see a grayscale of only red channel. You can do the same and change it for green as well as blue. Let's go back to RGB now. Now let me slice the viewer into four parts. The first screen we will make as red channel, the second as green, and the third as blue. And the fourth we will leave as it is, the mixture of all three RGB channels together. Now let's break it down. As you can see, in the red channel, we see that the face area is more brighter. It means that in that area, the red color passes through more, therefore we see more of red on the face. But we also see that on the green and the blue, it's a little bit darker. It does pass through, but less than red. That's why we have orangey red in the main picture. For example, the t-shirt is cyan color. If you break it down, we see that in the red channel, it is more darker because it has got less red color in it. But in green and blue, they're kind of the same, which creates cyan color. So the mixture of all of these values in each separate channel creates the overall color that we see here in the fourth screen. If I take a curve effect and apply it on this image and play around with the colors, you will see how these RGB separate channels change accordingly. If we change the red color, you will see that in a single channel red, everything goes dark. The less red is passed through and the green and blue passes through together. Therefore, in the main screen, we see their mixed color, cyan. If we additionally lower down the green, the more of the blue color passes through, and so on. So when we combine all of these RGB channels together, we see an image in its full colors. Now the image can contain fourth channel, and uh, that is known as alpha channel. This extra alpha channel allows you to separate the object from the environment it is in. The white part inside the alpha channel remains visible in the RGB image. Black becomes transparent, and anything in between white and black is semi-transparent. Now let me show you an example inside the After Effects. To check if this image has got an alpha channel, you need to click this ball icon here, and next to red, green and blue channels, you can select an alpha channel. Now let's go back to RGB. You can also toggle the transparency green by clicking this icon and it will reveal anything that is transparent. Now let me slice this view into two parts. This is the same image. In the first viewer, I will choose an alpha channel and in the second one, I will toggle the transparency grid, so it will be easier for you to understand it visually. And if we break it down and look at the alpha channel, you will see that anything that is white is kept in the RGB channel, and anything that is black is deleted and becomes transparent. So any new background or item can be placed behind the girl. Now there are several ways for the alpha channel to be exported and received. The first would be the pre-multiplied alpha, the second would be unpremultiplied alpha, also known as straight alpha, and the third one is separate alpha. Now let's go and break them down one by one. The separate alpha is a separate file of a black and white image that is also known and used as a luma mat. It doesn't have an alpha channel, but only contains an RGB. As a compositor, you have to apply this luma mat onto original shot in order to isolate the object from the background. Let me show you an example. This is the original shot that we have here. This is the layer for it. Now the separate alpha is a separate file that you have to apply on top of the original shot. It looks like this black and white image. If you study it, you will see that it does not contain an alpha channel. Everything is white, therefore everything is visible. What it means is that the black and white image is in the RGB channel. To use it, you need to select the original shot and under the track mat, drop down menu, select the luma mat. 
then it will isolate the object in the scene and cut out the background that we don't need here. Now if you will check an alpha channel, you will see that the alpha channel is the one that we applied through the luma mat. For multiplied and straight alphas is when the file already contains the alpha channel along with the RGB. In this case, as a compositor, you simply receive the file where an object is already isolated from the background. So you have to import the file and uh, interpret it if necessary. For multiplied alpha is a file that already is prepared with an alpha channel inside of it. So if you check the alpha channel inside, you will see that it is already containing it here. Therefore, it cuts it out automatically as you import it into the software. So to compare those two, separate alpha is when you receive a file where you have to use it as a luma mat and separate the object on your own. With pre-multiplied and straight alpha, you just import the file and it's working there already. Now prepare yourself because this might be complicated here. This will be about the difference between straight alpha and for multiplied alpha. Now let's overview the pre-multiplied method. I'm not going to go into mathematics of it, but in short, everything that is not needed in RGB channel is completely removed and replaced with a black background. And the pixels from the partially transparent areas in the RGB channel, like um, feather edge, motion blur, or else, are multiplied with that black background color, hence the name pre-multiplied. And then included alpha channel in that file isolates the object from the background. When in straight alpha, the RGB image is not multiplied with any black background. In fact, it does not even contain any transparency like it is in pre-multiplied alpha. Because it is not pre-multiplied, there has to be something on the background that the alpha channel can extract the semi-transparent parts from. So therefore, the parts that are semi-transparent in the RGB channel are filled in and extended with the color of the object, which visually does not look correct as it should. But because alpha channel does contain the transparency, it does extract the object correctly. So to conclude the differences between the straight and pre-multiplied. In short, pre-multiplied method contains transparency in both RGB and alpha channel, when in straight the transparency is only contained in alpha channel. The second thing is that in pre-multiplied the transparent areas are multiplied with black background color, when in straight the transparent areas of the RGB channel is extended with additional color. And none of them are superior over the other, it's just that different softwares use different methods but you as a compositor, you need to know how to accept them at your end so that you would not have any issues there in the process of compositing. Now let's go through that now. Now, how to distinguish a straight alpha from from multiplied alpha? As visually, they really look the same. Now let's go to the After Effects. This is the image it should look like and that's how we should receive it. So when you receive a file with an alpha channel and import it to the project, there will be a box appearing and asking you to select the alpha channel that this file contains. Now if you do know the answer and you were told, you just select accordingly. If you do not know, you can just guess and most of the time it will select the right answer. If you don't know and mess it up and select something wrong, then you will see there will be a problem later on. But for now, let's first check the correct answer and click OK. Now we have a file here under the project panel you will see that it shows the alpha channel information. It says pre-multiplied but this is not the alpha channel that the file contains itself. This is the alpha channel that the software interpreted it as. If you want to change an alpha channel interpretation you have to right click the file select interpret footage and click main. You will see the same box here appearing. Now, as we selected before, it was pre-multiplied. You can change it again and you will see that it changes as well under the project panel here. So it is not the exact alpha channel that we have in the file. So how do you really know which alpha channel does it contain? Let's check this file out. You will see that it looks fine because it was interpreted well. So we have an alpha channel. And as we know, in straight and pre-multiplied alphas, they both are transparent. That does not tell us much. In order to visually know what alpha it is, we need to turn off the alpha channel. So let's go back. We can do this by interpreting the alpha channel as ignore. Basically what it does, it just deletes the alpha channel and shows you the RGB only. And from what we see here, the RGB contains the transparency on the black background. Now, as we know from before, it is a pre-multiplied alpha. Let's go back and interpret it as pre-multiplied and it works fine. Now let's do the same and check the straight alpha. If we check the alpha channel again, we will see that it does contain the transparency, everything is fine. But if we go and turn off the alpha channel and only see the RGB, you will see that the transparent areas are extended by the extra color of the object. And as we know from before, it is only done in straight alpha. So if we go back 
and select it as straight, everything will be fine. So let me visually compare one to another. In the first viewer, we have a pre-multiplied alpha file. In the second viewer, we have a straight alpha file. Now visually, they look the same. Even if we check the alpha channel, both of them are the same. So the only way to find out is to interpret them by ignoring the alpha channel. Now you visually can compare them and see that the RGB are different. In the pre-multiplied, there's a transparency included and everything is fine with colors, it looks okay. In straight alpha, the colors are extended and the image doesn't look nice, but the alpha channel does the work and it cuts out the image well. So if we bring it back, we'll see a well-formed picture. So that is how you distinguish the pre-multiplied alpha from the straight alpha. You get rid of the alpha channel and look at the RGB. Now let's see what happens when you interpret the alpha channel wrongly. It doesn't look as it should. It should look like this, you know, there should be no black edges on the girl. The problem might be because it was wrongly interpreted. Let's check that. Now it is a pre-multiplied alpha, but we interpreted it as straight. Therefore you see the black edges appearing. So you have to click pre-multiplied and everything should be fine. That is the issue of interpreting the alpha in the wrong way. Now let's check the straight alpha. If we do interpret it wrongly, it is straight, but we select pre-multiplied, you will see that it creates the light edges. If you compare it, it should look like this, but we have white edges here. So you have to go back, interpret it in the right way as a straight should be fine. The fringing disappears. Sometimes there's a problem between softwares exporting and accepting the alpha channel and that is revealed through the black edge that appears around the RGB isolated area. Unfortunately, in After Effects, when you apply a separate alpha file and use it as a luma mat, the black fringing appears around the RGB image. Let me show it closer. As you can see, the highlights are orange, but when we apply the luma mat on top of the RGB channel, we have this black fringe covering the orange highlights which should not be there. Now how to fix that? The thing is that RGB channel and the separate alpha luma mat they do not contain an alpha channel. If you click on either of them and try to interpret you see it doesn't allow you to choose any alpha channel because it does not exist. Therefore we need to apply an effect in order to get rid of the black edges there. How to do that? In After Effects, we need to pre-compose those two layers into one, kind of imitating the pre-multiplied or straight alpha. It's not yet fixed. The next thing we need to do is to apply an effect. It's called Remove Color Matting. And then, as you can see, it does the work. The black fringe disappears. This process is known as unmultiplying. You see, if you would apply this effect directly on the RGB, nothing would happen. And that is because there is no alpha channel in this layer. That's why we created a pre-comp where there is an imitation of the alpha channel inside. This effect can be applied to any file that contains an alpha in it. As sometimes, black fringing can also occur with the pre-multiplied or straight alpha. So we looked how to accept and interpret the files that you receive from another department. But let's say you actually are on the other end and you need to prepare the files for the compositor. So let's see how to export the files with an alpha channel from After Effects. If you want to render with an alpha channel, you have to click on the output module settings. And in the video output section, under the channel drop-down menu, you will see that by the default it is RGB. What it means is that the image will not have an alpha channel. It will only contain an RGB with a black background. Now if you want to change that, you need to click this drop-down menu and choose alpha. By choosing alpha, you will export the separate alpha file, which can be used as a luma mat. If you choose RGB plus alpha, it will be either pre-multiplied or straight alpha. In order to choose one of them, you need to open the drop-down menu next to the color and choose either straight or pre-multiplied. Now keep in mind that not all of the formats support the alpha channels. For example, if we choose QuickTime, you will see that this format doesn't support the pre-multiplied or straight alphas, only the separate. So most of the time, you probably are going to use a PNG sequence, TIFF sequence, or target sequence, as, as all of them contain all alphas. So that is how you render in After Effects. I know this is a lot of information to process in one go, so I advise you to uh, favorite this video in your playlist in YouTube so we can check it out later on. And as well, share it and like it if you believe that uh, this information is worth reaching others. And that will be all. Thank you for your patience. I hope this was really helpful for you. And if you have any more questions, just let me know right in the comments down below. I'll try my best to answer it. See you in the next lesson.